All right, hello from under the Humvee. That's the front, that's the back. And right now I'm working on getting the fuel tank installed back in. See if I can get this thing back far enough. But basically, um, I've got some rubber hoses that are going to connect up here, and then I'll use the existing fuel line gear to get up to the engine compartment and solve the rest from there. Um, this is actually a piece of heat shielding that I got from the junkyard, and I've got this and much more that I scavenged off of other cars. So um, originally I was thinking I was gonna put some back here, but this is the bed area, so that really doesn't matter. Um, it's really kind of like this hatch and forward, right about here actually, um, that matters. So I'll end up covering a lot of this with um, with heat shielding and then doing the same in the engine bay. But the, uh, the way the fuel tank goes back in is there's a hanger uh, here and here. And so uh, the two straps, both in the front and the rear hook on here, bolt up here, um, tank presses up to the top. This line, I think is some kind of air, um, I guess equalizer, or it basically allows airflow from the two high spots in the tank, uh, both front and rear. The fuel filler net comes in from here and there's a vent line going back out there. So definitely don't plug that vent line on the tank, which you see right there. Don't plug that with uh, JV Weld as I started to until I realized what it was for. So um, anyway, that'll pretty much press out or press up and fasten in. I've got the uh, fuel lines connected to the tank right there and uh, planning on using a floor jack to prop this thing up in place while I get the straps fastened and the bolts supporting it. But it's empty this time, so it should be a little easier than before. Stay tuned. All right, so under the Humvee still, that's the rear differential and that's the fuel tank um, fastened in. You can see I've still got supported here with the floor jack and that was pretty helpful in uh, getting that thing held in place. I did end up taking apart uh, what started intact. I took this bolt out, it's 14 mil, everything is 14 mil, um, but took that out because otherwise the bracket was in the way and the geometry doesn't work to press in the tank. So once that was out, I was able to lift the rear end first, get it up around the differential, all the way to the underside of the bed or the ceiling that I'm looking at, and then pressed up the front. Um, with this bracket, uh, it was kind of a bitch to stretch it. So I stretched out, opened up the channel lock all the way to the slot of pliers and uh, compressed that so I could get a nut on it and then fasten it down with the impact and a wrench. So now I've got to connect this to there, same thing back here, and then hook up these fuel lines to the uh, hard lines that go forward into the engine compartment and it'll be uh, ready to attach wires to and use. So that's it. That's the fuel tank installation on the Humvee. All right, so the last part of this was connecting the uh, fuel lines and it looks like it's these two because they pop out. You can see them wiggling there. And that's about where the mechanical pump on the diesel engine would have been versus the other option was these. They're equal in size and they Look like they're probably a transmission cooler because you can see it up i guess you can't see them wiggle but up near the hood vent is where those lines come out and that's probably a transmission cooler or something it makes sense because they're back about where the transmission would be and they're threaded like they would thread into a transmission so anyway um these are the connections the small return the large feed for the fuel and then uh right here the uh, vent line which i just connected to the one that runs forward and I don't know if there's anything on the front of that or if it's just elevated to uh, make the uh, car able to go into the water, but that's it. So the fuel tank's connected and next will be electricity to the pump.